State Controller Tom DiNapoli, glad to have you back. Good to be back with you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. So the mid-year financial update from the Hochul administration makes it seem like we're doing pretty good for the state. We have about $4 billion in extra revenue coming in since the budget passed in April. So is it as good as it sounds from your perspective? Or are we on a good track right here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the short answer to that question is yes. And that's a combination of factors. You know, certainly tax collections have been coming in uh, stronger than anticipated, personal income tax collections, sales tax collections. The big game changer, though, Dan, has been the, the infusion of federal money. That's That certainly has made the big difference in terms of balancing our budget. So for now, uh, things are looking very strong, not only for this year, but uh, as you know, we're just starting the, the budget process and looking at the numbers for future years. And based on what we're seeing right now, Division of Budget is really projecting that the, the traditional out-year budget gaps that we're used to for so many years, they don't seem to be uh, coming into play at this point. Um, whether that holds up, uh, who knows? That's why we keep a close eye on revenue and spending. It sounds like good news. So does this mean that we are back to pre-COVID levels in terms of revenue and our finances in the state, or do we still have a kind of a long road to go for recovery? I'm trying to gauge whether this is just we're good in the moment or we're good in, I guess, the long term. Well, I would say let's not minimize the impact of the federal money, and the federal money is not forever. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, you know, when you look at something like sales tax, you know, which is a strong indicator of, of not only tax activity, but consumer confidence and overall economic activity, we, we seem to be ahead of pre-pandemic. Uh, or, or at or ahead of where we were pre-pandemic. But you look at some of the other numbers. Um, let's look at the employment numbers. Again, unemployment numbers continue to go down, which is good. But we've only grown back about 55, 56% of the jobs that were lost. So, you know, that's a concern. So I would say mi mixed uh, information, more of it is good than bad. Uh, look, the, the big factor, the big question mark still is, are we really out of it in terms of the pandemic? You know, should we go backward on 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 the numbers related to COVID and and pull back some of the some of the opening? You know, that's where we could see the 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 economy start to go backwards as well and see the tax revenue go backwards. So, you know, I think we still have to be very careful uh, about what we're doing and and very closely monitor what the trends are. You know, speaking of that federal uh, spending that you talked about, the federal infusion of funds into New York. The newly passed infrastructure bill in Congress has some money there for broadband infrastructure. And your office released a report about two months ago now highlighting the digital divide in New York. We know that this exists. More than one million houses, households lack access to broadband, according to your report. So can you tell me, based on that report that you put out and now we have this money available from, from Congress, how should we target that broadband problem here? Where does the money need to go to make it better? You know, for our rural communities, the issue really is the infrastructure and, and building it out. Uh, and across the state, not only the rural communities, but urban and suburban communities, uh, households of, of lower income um, and, and senior households, generally speaking, as well. Uh, that's where there has really been a big issue of access. So, you know, certainly targeting more support uh, to those at the lower end of the economic spectrum and, and doing more to build out the physical infrastructure for our rural communities, those would be the two priority areas. And again, that's where that federal money, as you point out, is going to be very helpful. For our economy to recover, uh, certainly we learned the hardware during the pandemic. The importance of internet access is key for work, for school, you know, for education, uh, just for daily living. So uh, this is really great news that we're going to see more of an emphasis and more help from Washington. You know, before we run out of time, I do want to get into politics just a little bit. So it seems like you're not running for governor, which you had been rumored to maybe be interested earlier this year. So you're not running for governor as far as we know. But I'm wondering, do you have a favorite in the race so far? We only have a few declared candidates, but is there anyone that you have your eye on? Well, uh, first of all, I do want to clarify, I am running uh, for state controller again. It's the best yes. job in state control. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, you know, look, all the names out there are uh, people I've worked with and friends of mine. Certainly the two leading candidates uh, are Governor Hochul and, and Attorney General James. Uh, uh, they're both friends, and we have a lot of work to do uh, separate from the political season. So at this point, I look forward to working with both of them and uh, looking forward to being on the Democratic ticket, whoever will be heading that ticket. 
but um, my focus on the political front is making sure that I get uh, to serve again and we'll let the others uh, play out their own respective uh, races and their own competition. Yeah, it's a really interesting time in New York in politics, especially among Democrats, because it seems like there is almost this, like, an almost split. I don't want to say the party is split down the middle, but there's almost a split between people that are on the far left in the Democratic Party and then people considered moderates who are a little bit more in the middle. Uh, where do you fall in that spectrum of ideologies? The Democratic Party is obviously a big tent, but I'm wondering where you fall in that. Mm. Well, I don't want, I don't want to uh, make light of the question, but I probably fall somewhere in the, in the middle of moderate and, and, and left. I'm probably like, you know, somewhere right in the middle there, which is, I think, where I've always been. But, I, you know, look, you, you're, you're identifying what is potentially a real problem for us. I, I mean, the strength of the Democratic Party is our openness and having a sense of open competition. The weakness is that we often find it hard to be united. And that's been one of the issues in Washington, obviously, that has delayed uh, really, you know, acting as quickly as, as I would have hoped on, on, on the Biden administration proposals. You know, New York is a big state. We have a lot of very talented people. It's nice to have options. <clears throat> you know, you mentioned the gubernatorial race, but I think you're going to have competition very clearly for the attorney general race. You have yes. a lot of folks lining yes. up for that. Uh, again, all friends, uh, as far as the names are out there. So, you know, I'm hoping there won't be much competition for the controller nomination. But, you know, at the end of the day, as we sort this out and if the primaries continue to be in June, which seems to be the plan right now, plenty of time to regroup. Because I think one of the lessons from this past election, you know, and I live on Long Island, I think, as you know, uh, Democrats should not take for granted uh, the voters or assume that because New York is such a blue state that Democrats are going to win all the time. And there were, there were significant Republican gains uh, on Long Island, particularly in other parts of the state as well. And if the Democrats do not unite as we sort through who our candidates will be, uh, we could lose. And, 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 and to me, that's the concern. We need to keep our eye on the, on, on the big picture, which is that Democrats have so much more in common uh, than, than, than that which divides us. And we, we should spend a little less time on those divisions. And, and, and I really think the, the election results of 2021 are a wake-up call uh, that we need to get our act together, because if we don't, the voters are going to say, you know what, we're going to go with the other party. And, and I, I, I think we need to be mindful of that. Yeah, it's going to be something really interesting to watch in New York politically, at least, for those interested in following those kinds of things. But we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your insight and your perspective. State Controller Tom DiNapoli. Thanks, Dan.